Hi, welcome to Knowledge Quest 8, Rolling Contact Bearings in Combined Loading. This is a shorter knowledge quest, so really I'll just be showing you some new equations to use to deal with when we have combined radial and thrust loadings and how to put that all in your analysis tool. So we have an analysis procedure for this combined loading situation, which is what is going to be the focus of this knowledge quest. So if you have a radial load and an axial load on a bearing, it's called a combined load. So you can kind of see it here. So radial load, axial load, this would be the resultant combined load. And where might this come from? It comes from gears like a helical gear or a bevel gear, something that has angled teeth. So Tapered roller bearings are designed to take both radial and axial thrust loads, but ball bearings are also capable of resisting axial and thrust loads, although not as good at resisting thrust loads as they are at resisting axial loads. So the main equation we'll use is shown in the green box here. Consider FA and FR to be the axial and radial loads respectively. FE is then the equivalent radial load that does as much damage as the combined radial and axial loads together. X and Y depend on the geometry and construction of a specific bearing, but also on the ratio of the thrust load to the basic static load rating. So you'll see that there are two outcomes for X, I, and Y, I. So either X1, Y1, or X2, Y2. And then V here is the rotation factor. In a bearing, the outer ring won't always rotate, but when it does, fatigue life is reduced. So you'll use V equals 1.2 for outer ring rotation, V equals 1 for inner ring rotation. So let's go back to this determining if you have to use X1, Y1, or X2, Y2. When the ratio FA over VFR is relatively low, meaning that the axial load is small compared to the radial load, then X1 is one and Y1 is zero. If you look at the formula for FE, when Y1 is zero, we lose the axial term altogether. But when the ratio FA over VFR begins to increase above this threshold E, which is just kind of a random variable, we do need to consider the axial load. It's going to make a lot more sense when we do an example. So in fact, let's just jump into an example right now. So we have an O2 series single row deep groove ball bearing with a 30 millimeter bore that is loaded with a two kilonewton axial load and a five kilonewton radial load. The inner ring rotates at 400 RPM and the bearing is rated for 1 million cycles. So the first thing we want to determine is the equivalent radial load that will be experienced by this particular bearing. So in other words, the FE. And then we also want to determine the predicted life and revolutions that this bearing could be expected to give in a commercial loading application with a 99% reliability. So here are the answers just for reference, but I'm going to show you what this looks like in my analysis tool and how to step through this first example before you try a concept check on your own. So here's my analysis tool. You've seen it before for bearings. So we've learned equation 11.3 and equation 11.10. And I'm just gonna come over here to the section on combined radial and thrust loading and enter in the values that we have. So our radial load is five kilonewtons. Our axial load is two kilonewtons. We have inner ring rotation, so V equals one. So this FA over VFR ratio is an automatic calculation, so that's why you see it in orange. To find the C naught, we have to go to the table. We have an O2 series single row deep groove ball bearing with a 30 millimeter bore. So single row O2 series deep groove ball bearing with a 30 millimeter bore. Our C naught is 10 kilonewtons. And then we get an automatic calculation of FA over C naught. But let's go back to this C naught because we haven't even talked about it. So we've used this table before to figure out the catalog load rating the C10. So what is this C naught? So the C naught is the static load rating. And it's essentially the load that you, the maximum load that you would want to sit statically on a bearing. So you'll notice it's kind of interesting that the catalog load rating for this particular bearing is 19.5 kilonewtons, which is greater than the static load rating. 
And that's because it's actually a worse situation to have a static load just sitting on the bearing because it's always causing stress on like one or two or three of the rolling elements versus spreading out that stress over multiple rolling elements. Okay, so we have an FA over C naught value of 0.2, and now we're going to go down here to this new table that you should drop in your analysis tool. So we don't have an exact value of 0.2 in this column FA over C naught. So it's somewhere in between 0.17 and 0.28. So the first thing we're going to do is interpolate for this value E to figure out if we need to use X1, Y1, or x2, y2. So I like this really simple linear interpolation calculator by John D. Cook. Okay, so 0.17 and 0.28 and 0.2. So we have 0.34. This is what we're solving for. The e corresponding to an fa over c naught of 0.28 is 0.38. Then we calculate, so 0.35, put that in here, and our i is 2, and we can just, you know, check that to make sure that we're doing it correctly. So our fa over vfr value is 0.4, and that's greater than our e of 0.35. So that means we're going to use this x2, y2. So x2 is 0.56. And then y2, which is what will go in this yellow box here, that's another interpolation that we need to do. All right, so you have 0 0.17, 0 0.2, and 0 0.28, corresponding to 1.31. This is what we're solving for, and 1.15. 1.27. Okay, so the equivalent Radio load is 5,340, and remember, I have this in newtons. So that's the first part of this example. Second part, determine the predicted life and revolutions that this bearing could be expected to give in a commercial loading application with a 99% reliability. So then we're going to go back to equation 1110 because we have a 99% reliability, so we need to do that whole um, Weibull parameter thing here. So application factor, I think, for commercial loading, 1.2 is in the middle. So here is the, the key point. So for your load desired, your FD, that is going to become your FE, your equivalent radial load. So 5340 hours, this is what we're actually solving for. So I'm just going to set this to 1. I don't need to, but it just reminds me that that's what we're going to solve for because obviously one hour wouldn't be a realistic um, life in hours. So speed desired, looks like we have 400 RPM. Desired reliability, 99%. Rated life, this is, let's say, an SKF bearing, so a million revolutions. It's a ball bearing. Okay, so in my analysis tool, I have to be careful with my units. So this was in Newton's. And this C10 is actually in Newtons. But we know the C10 of this particular bearing that was given in the problem statement. So we're going to go down. And we had this 0230 millimeter bearing. The C10 is 19.5 kilonewtons. So we're going to goal seek. So essentially, what I'm going to do is goal seek set C10 to 19.5 or 19,500 newtons by changing the desired hours. So we get 257 hours, which isn't very long. Why is that? Because I just made up the problem. So what would happen in a situation where we really did need a bearing to carry a two kilonewton axial load and a five kilonewton radial load? We probably wouldn't be choosing an O2 series 30 millimeter bore bearing. We need to choose something that had a higher capacity, but this just shows you the process. Then the last part of this problem is to determine the predicted life in revolutions. So at our speed of 400 RPM, if it had a life of 257 hours, we would be 
looking at 6,168,000 revolutions. So there are our answers. One more thing I want to say about the basic static load rating. It's the static load that will produce a permanent deformation in the raceway. And again, we see that it's going to be less than the catalog load rating. So for the quiz, one of the series of questions you'll have is this concept check, so predicted life in hours. You'll have an SKF angular contact ball bearing with an axial load of 450 pounds and a radial load of 525 with the outer ring stationary. The basic static load rating C0 is 5,000 pounds and the catalog load rating is 8,000 pounds. So you're going to estimate the life in hours of the bearing at a speed of 750 RPM. So use an application factor of 1.2 right in the middle for commercial gearing and assume 95% reliability. Okay, that's it. I told you it was short and sweet. See you soon.